Hello and welcome to the Phone Burner Training. I am your host, Jeff Osnes. If you want to reach out to me, send me an email, jeff at phoneburner.com. I'll be happy to help out any way I can. Today we're going to talk about customizing your dispositions or customizing the buttons that you see when you're making calls. In this training, I'm going to show you how you can customize those buttons. So now let me show you how you can customize the dispositions within your phone burner account. So we're going to click on the dial sessions tab. We're going to click on the phone burner settings button and then we're going to go to dispositions. On the dispositions page you're going to see two sections the dialing set and the live answer set. The dialing set is the first group of buttons that you see when we first start calling a contact. The types of buttons that you would put in a dialing set are the types of buttons that you would use if nobody answered the phone. So for example the buttons that you might have in there are stuff like leave voicemail, no answer, busy signal. Now the second set of buttons is the live answer set. This is the set of buttons that you would see on the screen. So after you have a live conversation with somebody and you end that call, you're going to see a different set of buttons that you can use to set the status of that call. So we're going to go into each one of these and talk about them. So here in the dialing set section you'll see the default dialing set. Every account is set up with a default dialing set and a default live answer set. You can of course create additional dialing sets and additional live answer sets. If you don't want to start from scratch when you're creating a new set, you can copy an existing set. So for the purpose of this training, I'm just going to edit the existing default dialing set. And so I'm going to click on this edit button. From here I can now see the five buttons that make up the default dialing set. I can change the name if I want to. I can also deactivate a dialing set. Now down below here you're going to see the different buttons. There are currently five buttons in the default dialing set. Leave voicemail, no answer, busy signal, bad number, and fax machine. If you don't like the order of the buttons, you can of course rearrange them any way you'd like. If you don't need any of the buttons, you can just delete a button. So let's say fax machine is a button that you're never going to use. You can go ahead and delete that. Now we no longer have a fax machine button. If you want to edit a button, you can either click on the button itself or you can click on the edit this button link over on the right hand side and that'll bring up the button editor. And let me walk you through the button editor. The first option is the text. That's the visual text that you're going to see on the screen or on the button itself when you're making calls. Let's say for example as we're customizing our dialing set we need to have two voicemail buttons. Maybe an English voicemail and a Spanish voicemail. And so we're going to take our existing button, our existing leave voicemail button, and let's edit this button. Let's convert this button into our English only voicemail. So here I've got my text. I'm going to change this to English VM. The status, I can either leave this as left message or I can change that to English VM. So if I want to track how many voicemails I leave of each kind, it would be a good idea to change the status. So I'm going to go ahead and change the status from left message to English VM. Now the next option is the voicemail option. It's currently set to use the dial session default. So I actually want to change that. I want to assign my English voicemail to this button. So here in the drop down menu I've got an English voicemail that I've already uploaded into my account and I'm going to assign it to this button. Now the next option is what kind of note do I want the system to automatically add to this contact record when I leave the English voicemail. So I may want to change this to something like left the English voicemail. And then the next option is the one touch email. Every button in phone burner can send an email. So you can automate the process of sending your follow-up emails. Huge time saver. So here in the one touch email drop down I'll see a list of all of the emails that I've created in my account and since I am creating my English voicemail button I'm going to assign just the standard left message email that I've created. And then the next option is the move to folder. One of the nice things about phone burners you can move your contacts from one folder to another based off the button you click to help you organize your contacts. Now typically if I were to call somebody and leave them a voicemail, I would not necessarily want to move them from one folder to another because, in my opinion, nothing about that contact record has changed. So I'd probably want to just leave them in the folder they were in when I originally started the session. So I'd leave that set to do not move. And now the next option, I have the option of removing or adding tags to contact records based off the buttons I click on. Now this is a voicemail button, so I'm not going to add any tags, but we're going to talk about this a little bit more when we get into the live answer set. And then the next option, 
is next action. As you're making calls, you may have contacts that have multiple phone numbers. If you have contacts that have multiple phone numbers, in certain cases, you may want to call the next phone number within that contact record, like in the case of a voicemail. Now, there may be other situations where you actually talk to the contact, even though they have more phone numbers, you don't necessarily want to call those phone numbers if you've already talked to them. So you would use one of the other options like next contact. And then the last option is the ask me. That's what you use if you're not sure what you might do in the case when you'd you you know when you'd click on that specific button once again this is a button specific setting moving down the list here we have the dnc option now there's three options for dnc no yes dnc phone number and yes dnc the entire contact so in the case of a voicemail we're going to leave this set to no but in other cases like a bad phone number situation we'd want to add that number to our dnc list so we don't ever call it again or try to call it again now if somebody actually picks up the phone and says hey don't ever call me again we'd probably want to use the dnc the entire contact option that would take every phone number associated with that contact and add it to your dnc list so that you don't have to worry about calling any of their other phone numbers if you have other phone numbers associated with the contact but in this case since we're editing a voicemail button we're going to leave that set to no and we're going to move on to the last option which is delete contact the delete contact option allows you to set the system or set the button to automatically delete that contact when you click this specific button now once again we're creating a voicemail button we're not going to set this to yes we're going to leave it set to no when it makes sense to delete every contact that we leave a voicemail with right however as a personal note i'm not a big fan of deleting contacts in general because if you delete a contact later on if you imp if you're importing another list that has that same contact or contact phone number on it that contact won't be picked up as a duplicate so personally i like to move my contacts that i that i don't want to deal with the ones that i might think about deleting i like to move those into a specific folder and then of course add them to my do not call list so i don't call them again but i like to keep them in my system to help me keep from adding them back later on. So anyway, that's a little overview of the button editor specific to the leave voicemail option. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And here you can see our English voicemail button has now been updated. If we look here, we've got our bad number button and you can see it is set to DNC the phone number. Let me show you how to add a button from scratch. So we're going to click on add new button. That's going to open up our button editor. And in this case, let's add our our Spanish voicemail. So we'll give it a text of Spanish VM. We'll give it a status of Spanish VM. Our voicemail dropdown, we're going to choose our Spanish voicemail. And in our note, we're just going to go ahead and type something like left Spanish VM. And then we're going to move down the list here. One touch email, we're going to go ahead and select left Spanish. Move to folder, we're going to leave that set to do not move. And since it's a voicemail, we don't care to remove or add tags because nothing's really changed on this contact. It, we've just left them a voicemail. However, since we do have the two different types of voicemails, maybe you want to have a tag for English voicemail and Spanish voicemail and add those tags. I'm going to leave that within the status, but just wanted to throw that out there just in case you wanted to tag your contacts or track them separately that way. With the next action option, I'm going to switch that from ask me to next number. DNC and delete, I'm going to leave set to no and I'm going to save. Our button is now saved and you'll see it on the list with the other buttons. And once again, we can rearrange our button. So if we wanted our English and Spanish voicemails to be next to each other, we can certainly do that. And that's how easy it is to customize your buttons. We focused here on the dialing set but let's jump into the live answer set and just kind of talk about that a little bit. We've got our default live answer set here. We're going to go ahead and edit this. Once again, we could change the name if we wanted to, and we can deactivate it by unchecking that box. I'm going to leave that alone, and we're going to go down to our buttons. In the button section, you're going to see the four buttons that currently make up this default live answer set. Now these are very standard or very generic buttons. Interested, not yet interested, wrong person, and do not call. Obviously this may or may not match what you're trying to track with your live conversations, right? So as you're having conversations with people, there are going to be certain types of outcomes that you're looking for or you're getting, and you want to be able to track those. In those cases, you want to create buttons. So let's say I've got this interested button, but interested doesn't really make sense for what I'm doing. I'm trying to set an appointment with somebody. So technically, if they're interested, I set an appointment. So I'm going to edit this interested button. I'm just going to click on this. 
it'll open up the interested button editor. So now I can start editing this button. And I'm going to change it from interested to set appointment. I'm going to change the status from interested to set appointment. I'm also going to change the automatic note from interested to set appointment. And then the next option is my one touch email. I've created a set appointment email so I'm going to go ahead and assign that email to the button. I'm also going to move my contacts into my set appointment folder. So as I'm setting appointments with people I want to get those contacts segmented out. I want to pull them out of my general calling list and get them tucked away in a nice little set appointment folder so I can keep track of them separately. The next section is the add remove tag section. I may want to add a tag indicating that I set an appointment with them. What's nice about tags is they stick with the contact even if the phone burner status changes or the folder changes. So if later on I move that contact into a different folder or later on I call them and I leave a voicemail with them, I still have a tag that I can search to find anybody that I've ever set an appointment with as long as I've got a set appointment tag associated with them. And the next action option I'm going to move on to the next contact. If I've set an appointment with them and I have additional phone numbers I want to move on to the next contact. And of course DNC and delete contacts I'm going to leave those set to no and I'm going to save the button. And here you can see my button has been updated the move to options been changed, the emails there, we're all ready to go. So now let's look at our not yet interested button. I'm going to click on that. And so here we've got the button editor for the not yet interested button. If you want to change the text you can do that. I'm going to go ahead and leave that alone. Uh, status, I want to leave that alone. Uh, note, going to leave that alone. One touch email, I don't want to send an email to somebody who said they're not interested so I'm going to leave that set to none. The move to folder option, I could create a custom not interested folder and move them into that, but personally if they tell me they're not interested I'm just going to move them into my bad slash DNC folder and get rid of them. And then remove tags, add tags, not interested in adding or removing tags because they've told me they're not interested. Next action in this case I want to move on to the next contact because they've told me they are not interested. DNC and delete, I don't want to delete. I probably don't necessarily want to add them to my DNC list just in case later on I do, you know, maybe six months down the road I want to do another round of follow-up calls to my not interested contacts. So I'm not necessarily going to always add a not interested contact to my DNC. But I'll leave that up to you when you're customizing your buttons. And I'm going to save. Now the next button here is our wrong person button. I'm not going to worry about editing this button but I do want to talk to you a little bit about this button. The idea behind this button is you've called the right phone number but the wrong person answered. Maybe you're calling Bob and Sally answered. Sally says Bob's not here so it's not necessarily a typical voicemail situation and it definitely wasn't a no answer so we want to be able to kind of track that a little bit so we have a wrong person button. Then we've got our do not call button. I'm going to just edit this one real quickly. We're going to leave everything the same only I'm going to move the contact into our bad slash DNC folder and save. And the last thing I want to do is I actually want to add a new button. So I'm going to click on add new button and I want to create a new button for my follow-ups. People that I talk to and they say you know what give me a call back in three months, three weeks, three days somebody that I'm just going to follow up with. They didn't really set an appointment with them. I don't have a fixed date and time to follow up with them. But it's just somebody that I want to, you know, they said that they're kind of interested. They'd be open to talking to me. So I want to follow up with them. I want to track them a little bit differently. So I'm going to create a follow-up button for these people. And so I'm going to set a status of follow-up. I'm just going to put a note in there of follow-up. I may have a follow-up email that I've created that I can assign to that button. I can move those contacts into a follow-up folder to kind of separate them from the list. Adding and removing tags. I may want to add a tag of follow-up to the contact. Next action, I would move on to the next contact. DNC and delete, we leave those set to no and we save. And so that's how easy it is to customize and create buttons for your live answer set. So now we've customized our dialing set and we've customized our live answer set. Now let's take a moment and let's actually make some calls so you can see how those customizations will look during the dial session itself. So we're going to go to contacts and we're going to take our sample contacts here and we're just going to do a quick dial session so bear with me. So when you're beginning your dial session you'll have the option to choose your dialing set and your live answer set. Right now we just have the defaults but had we created additional dialing sets and live answer sets 
we'd be able to choose which one we want to use at this point. I'm going to leave them set to the default and we're going to go ahead and continue. And now we just need to get our phone connected to the system and start dialing. So I'm going to use my cell phone real quick and make the call. Okay, so we're now connected to the dial session. I'm going to go ahead and take my phone off speaker. So hopefully that won't be too loud as we're calling these sample contacts. I'm also going to make this dial session window a little bit larger. And now let's start dialing. Once we start dialing our first contact, we're going to see our dialing set. Here you can see our English VM button and our Spanish VM button that we created. If this person is English, we click the English. If it's Spanish, we click our Spanish. And of course, these are just the ones I created. You can create whatever types of buttons that make sense for you, and then you can use them. So let's say that Sally was speaking Spanish, so we click the Spanish VM, and we move on to the next call. And now we're calling Jeff Sample. Let's say Jeff Sample answers the phone, so we click the Live Answer button. We're having our conversation with Jeff. Everything goes well, having a good time, we're updating our notes, and we end the call when we're done talking to Jeff. So we've now ended the call with Jeff Sample. We still have Jeff's information up here so we can continue to update our notes. So if we wanted to add more notes, we can add more notes make any updates to the contact record that we want, and then when we're done and we're ready to move on to the next call, that's when we would click on one of our buttons from the Live Answer set. So here at the bottom you can see the five Live Answer buttons that we have customized in our account. Here's the Set Appointment button that we customized. Here's our Follow Up button that we edited. But let's say Jeff was Really nice, we had a good conversation with him and we set an appointment. So we click the Set Appointment button and that would move us on to the next call. You click the Disposition button once you're done with the record and you're ready to move on to your next call. So now our session is ended. We see our dial session summary here, the outcome of all of the different calls that we made and I'm going to go ahead and close this window. Now because we left a voicemail with Sally and we set our voicemail button not to move Sally, she should still be in our contacts folder. However, Jeff, we set an appointment with him, so he should have moved to our set appointment folder. So let's go check on that real quick. If we click on the set appointment folder, there we go. You can see Jeff Sample is right there in the set appointment folder. And that's how easy it is to customize your buttons within PhoneBurner. Once again, our phone burner pricing. For an individual unlimited account, it's $149 a month. For an individual 7.5 hour account, it's $67.50. Now, if you're part of a team, the more seats you have, the more money you'll save. And so here you can see the price breaks as you increase the number of seats that you have. We can set up any number of seats that you need. Just let us know and we'll help you get that all set up. If you've not set up your phone burner account, you need to go get your phone burner account today. There's no credit card required. We're happy to set you up with a trial. Just go to phoneburner.com and happy dialing.